Fence Marketing Profit Podcast. Interviews with million dollar plus fence and gate business owners on how they market and grow their companies in today's economy. Hear directly from the most successful leaders in your business and discover what they're doing to keep their phones ringing, trucks running, and businesses booming with your host, Scott Andreessen. All right. So we are live. And uh, we're going to get started here in just a moment. I have Caleb Roth of uh, Stain and Seal Experts on with us today. How are you doing, Caleb? Hey, I'm doing great, Scott. How about yourself? Awesome. I'm doing well. Um, so we're going to give people just a little bit of time here to come aboard. And uh, while we're doing that, I am going to zap us on over to... Facebook. So let me do that. People are making their way in. That's really cool. So we're going to get started here in just a moment, folks. Thanks for joining us. What's up, Jesse? What's up, Mandy? What's up, Paul? Hope you guys are doing well. Awesome, awesome. So we're going to get things going here in just a moment. I just want to uh, get us on over to Facebook real quick. That's just a little bit of a process. And cool. So I think we are now live on Facebook as well. Awesome, yep, so we're on Facebook. Let's go ahead and get started. So thanks for joining us, everyone. Uh, today we have a special guest with us, Caleb Roth from Stain and Seal Experts. And uh, Caleb is gonna be talking to us about maximizing uh, your, your bottom line using fence staining uh, as an additional service for your fence company. Or even if you're in the fence staining business already, I think you're going to get some really useful tips from Caleb. How are you doing, Caleb? Hey, I'm doing great. Awesome. So can you start off, please, by just telling us you know, a bit about yourself and how you got into fencing and then fence staining? Yep. Yeah, I sure can. So, so I was born into the fence industry like a lot of you guys were. And uh, family had a fence company and they ran it from, I think they started in the early 90s, around 92. And uh, I just grew up in it. So when, when I got out of school, naturally, I went to college for a little while and decided that college wasn't for me. And so I went into the family business. I had always worked in the crews, you know, as a kid. But when I, when I got out of school, I, uh, I got put right into sales and had no idea what I was doing. But luckily, uh, the, the old lady uh, who was the first uh, prospect I was sent to go out and look at, she bought the most expensive fence in the book and she said yes right there on the spot. And so that I just thought, well, hey, this is easy, you know. All right, it was a lattice top fence. I remember exactly where it was. It still stands today. And I, I remember, I'll tell you how long ago it was. It was 1950 a foot for like, an, like a six foot tall lattice top fence. It was, it had all the cap on it and the post caps. And, I think that fence would be like 35 bucks today. So uh, in our market, so times have definitely changed, but I just, I got started doing the fence thing and, and ran, helped run the family fence business. And after I'd been in it for maybe six months, my dad sort of, uh, uh, he kind of took a semi retirement. He took a step back and kind of let me take the wheel on things. And we, we only, we averaged somewhere right around, we hovered right around a million bucks a year in that fence business. And uh, it was nothing big like some of you guys that are listening, but it was a good little business and I got a lot of experience there. And honestly, I got to a point where I wanted to make more money as a salesman. So I decided I would, I would uh, look into staining fences. And so uh, one thing led to another and I, I decided I was going to stain fence. So I went down to Texas and learned how to stain a fence and I came back and uh, along the way made lots of mistakes. And, uh, but I figured out a lot of ways to do things right and uh, what works for us. And that's kind of the rest is history. You know, I just got into it and, and went full time and haven't looked back since. Very cool. So um, what does the operation look like now? Stain and seal experts, like how many crews do you have? Can you tell us about that? Well, 
I have scaled back some in the last probably one year. Um, for, for instance, uh, 24 months ago, I used to keep about 120 jobs at a time on the books, which made me pull my hair out. Now I try to keep around 30 or 40 jobs on the books at any given time. But our business has changed uh, quite a bit. So we're, this year, we keep roughly two to three careers running year round. Uh, this year, year round has been tough because we've had a lot of weather, but we're on track this year to be around 1.2 million in staying contracting. And uh, one of the things that helps us get that with such a small crew is, uh, is we take on a lot of big projects. We try to get the commercial jobs. We try to get the bigger ones. And uh, obviously you can, you can, you can beef your numbers up pretty quick with some big projects. And um, that's pretty much it. That's where we're at. We, we obviously, for those that don't know, we have a distribution company. The stain business has helped us get into distribution. Stain business got us into manufacturing. We, we manufacture fence and deck stains and, sell them all over North America now, Alaska, Canada, and uh, the U.S. So, um, so the stain business has helped me go from, you know, a little tiny fence contractor to, to kind of moving up in the, in the world of our industry, you know. Got it. How, I guess the switch is what I'm curious about. How did you go from being a fence contractor to saying, well, I'm kind of, I'm going to get out of building and installing fences. Instead, I'm going to get in the stain. Like what, how'd that come about? Um, you know, you could call it a lot of things. You could call it laziness. You could call it, uh, you know, because, you know, the, for, to build a 300 foot privacy fence, it's two days to stain a 300 foot privacy fence is two hours. And the money was the same. Uh, the profit wow. was the same. So, you know, for me, it was like, Hey, I can go with minimal equipment. I can go do, you know, cause I started out, it was just me and um, I could go do a job with minimal equipment and, and I could make a good money. And, and, you know, it, it just, it made sense for us. I didn't have to break rock. We're in middle Tennessee, Every, you know, three out of four jobs here, you got to break through rock or, or you got a good chance of having to break rock and run a jackhammer. And uh, our fence market here in Nashville uh, around maybe 2013, uh, all of our sub crews got together and sort of, sort of unionized. Basically, they said, uh, we're not going to work for the prices we worked before. And they sort of, in some cases, they doubled their prices and they just stayed firm on it. And so what, what we saw happening was uh, our labor rates went through the roof, but our actual finished product rate didn't. So we started seeing guys come on the market that were, um, that were building fences they were, they would use straight sub crews and, uh, and they ran on about a dollar a foot per job profit. And that that was what the, the company made. And the, you know, the sub crew made four or five bucks a foot and the company made a buck a foot. And we just, to, to us, it was just, the, there was no way to operate that way because it didn't make sense. You know, it didn't fit our old model. It kind of flip flop things. And, uh, so that was kind of the time that I, I got out of it and went kind of straight into started thinking about staining. So you found a way to make the same amount of money essentially by doing less work and it's faster so you can scale this kind of business quicker. Well, it's got its own set of unique difficulties. Um, obviously the wood needs to be dry and you, you know, you can come up with tips and tricks to overcome some of the weather. It's, you know, issues like wind and things like that. But if it's super windy, like today here in Nashville, the winds, 40 miles an hour. We're doing deck. I got crews out doing decks by hand today, which we normally do decks by hand. And uh, you can't spray a fence on a day like today unless you're in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. So it's got its own instances. Some years we're, we're able to work 11 months and 29 days. And uh, some years it's, uh, you know, a seven, eight month a year business. So it just depends. You know, we've seen some changes in the weather in the past two years. And so we'll just adapt to that and overcome it. But you know, it, it's kind of a, it, it's much more weather dependent than the fence industry. But, you know, you fence contractors know if it's raining, people call and they say, hey, I don't care if it's raining, I want my fence built. But with staining, uh, people are a little more lenient. You know, you say, hey, you know, it may rain tomorrow or today or whatever. And typically they say, well, wait, don't come and do it unless the weather's right because we want it right. So that was one of the biggest differences I noticed from, from straight fence construction to, to staining and sealing was people tend to be a little more forgiving and a little more understanding about scheduling issues. Got it. So 
the folks that are attending this webinar and those that are going to watch in the future are obviously they're going to be looking for ways to add to their bottom line and fencing is a way to do that what are some of the main selling points of why people are buying the fence staining from you well for us it's all about to preserve to protect or restore you know um obviously if a fence is built and, and nothing happens in a few years, it could, it could rot out and it, or it could uh, uh, warp and twist. You got all kinds of problems that you get. It turns gray. It looks bad. And some people, you know, we, we used to put in really high end fences. We kind of niched in that high end market of Nashville and we built fences and people would build a, a, you know, a really high end fence and they'd do nothing. And in six months or a year with cedar, it looked terrible. So, so the number one reason why most homeowners, I think, would stain or seal their fence is to make it look better. I mean, that's what it boils down to. Um, but, but really, for a fence contractor, the reasons that you need to think about is because, obviously, if you, if you stain and seal a fence, you've got less issues with warping, twisting, things like that, and, and your jobs are just going to look better overall. So if you've got your fence sign on a beautiful fence that looks good for five years, um, next door, you got a competitor's fence that's turned gray after a year or two, obviously your fence would be more attractive and, and it could lead to more revenue at the end of the day. Got it. Awesome. So who, who is the best target for this for guys that are getting into it? Should they be going after residential commercial? What's that look like? Well, you know, I think most guys have already got the customer base. The, the clients are already there. They've got a backlog of uh, past clients that they can call upon. And uh, you don't want every job. Obviously, there's some you want and some you don't want. For guys just getting in, I would, I would say go after the low-hanging fruit. So, you know, go after um, the easy stuff. You know, for instance, uh, don't, you know, don't, you know, some guys do it and, and you can do it. But some guys jump in there and they take on really challenging jobs up front but just like building fence you know you don't your first fence job you you may do a standard stockade or a chain link fence you don't you don't take on the border wall on your first fence project you know so um but pretty much whatever your niche is if you build agricultural fence and you're doing huge horse farms there's a there's a, a stain and seal or a fence painting market there if you're building custom cedar fences there's a market there if you're doing just regular plain jane treated pine privacy fences, that's, that's a whole nother market. And uh, deck builders too, a lot of you fencers do decks, that, you know, decks are a, a whole nother huge stain and seal opportunity. Got it. So, um, and let me give a shout out to Manitow. I see you joined us. What's up Manitow? Um, they, if they have an email list, they could just go through their email list, do a blast and mm -hmm. start picking up some fence staining clients like that. You can. You can, or if you do all your stuff digitally and you already know what the measurements are, you already know the project, you could, you could have somebody just go through and prepare quotes for every single job that you've done, or, or at least a rough ballpark and say, hey, uh, Mr. Prospect, we built your fence 18 months ago. If you want us to come out and preserve that, that investment and uh, we could clean it and we could do a, a basic stain job, you're, you should, you're looking, most projects that we've done in the past, similar to yours, have been between eighteen hundred and fourteen hundred dollars. Does that interest you? And see what they say. You know, you can. You know, at the end of the year, every year, we have a lot of contractors locally that'll call us and and uh, they'll send us their whole list for the year, and we'll just call all of them. I think one guy sent us five hundred leads last year in in December, and it didn't cost us a dime. So how? What's the time span? You mentioned 18 months. How far back could they go on a customer list? Well, to you know, we still get calls on fences that we built, our company built. I, I kept my phone number, so I've still got all my old contacts when I was a fence salesman. And so I get people that are 10 years, we built the fence 10, 12 years ago, they call me. I had a lady call yesterday. We built her an old cedar and cypress fence. And uh, we've not had cypress in Nashville in at least 10 years. And, uh, and they called, so. Um, you could go back indefinitely, really. I mean, if the fence is still standing and it's worth saving, then yeah, you know, you could go back as far as you want. But your most guys, I'd say, go back 24 months. Start with that. Yeah, um, like if the wood is not too rotted, and maybe it's just a couple panels or whatever, um, the business or the uh, the owner, they're not going to want to replace the whole fence. But this is a nice 
upsell and gives them value. Yeah, you, for you'd be really two thousand twenty five hundred bucks. Yeah, you'd be really surprised what we could do with a really nasty old fence. If it's if it's structurally uh, sound, then we can definitely really change the way it looks. How should the business strategy be set up for these guys? If, for instance, if they're already in fencing and they're not <clears throat> doing staining, there's going to be some somewhat of a learning curve and how would you recommend that? Do, em, employees, well, train them, contractors? Well, the first thing I would do is, is, is try to get, you know, obviously you can figure out who's going to do it. I, I tend to put the cart before the horse, you know, I'll sell something and then figure out how to f fulfill it later. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, uh, optimistic. I, I'll go after Moby Dick with a rowboat and, you know, I'll take tartar sauce with me. So, <laughs> um, but, but what I would do is start adding the line item onto your bids. If you're bidding, 10 uh, privacy fence jobs a week, wood fences or decks, whatever, add the light item on, you know, hey, and if you're unsure, make it a higher price until you and, and to build, start building the, uh, the customer base. I talk to guys all the time that have sold four or five stain jobs and they've never stained a fence and they're calling us trying to figure out what to do and we'll walk them through it. But um, that, that's pretty much it. I would start with my current jobs you've got on the books. If you've got 10 fences sold right now, call them up and say, Maybe, maybe one or two you don't want to fool with. They're really complex, but the other eight are easy jobs. Call them up and say, have you thought about, you know, staining and sealing? We offered this and maybe we, you know, some, we've got guys here in Nashville that uh, they offer a 90 day warranty uh, on their fence. And if you, if you have the fence stained within that 90 day window, they extend it to one or two or five years. So there's different little tricks you can add in there to kind of incentivize that. But uh, yeah. that's where I would start. Just add it right in into your quotes. Yeah. Cause it, it seems like you could do, for instance, the jobs on the books, as you're completing that fence, offer them some kind of incentive based discount that, you know, normally the price is going mm -hmm. to be this. You could, but if you know, you go ahead and, and do it right now, we can knock off this. Right, right. You you know how hum, you know how human nature is. You you know, you could you could say you know fence staining is X amount of dollars today. If you wait a certain amount of time, you're going to have to clean that fence before you stain it. That cleaning is going to cost uh, this amount of money, and and there's a chance that stain prices may increase. So, do you want to take it now for 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 one dollar, or do you want to pay three dollars uh, in in 24 months? You know, it just depends. Yeah. And for those guys that are financing, it's easy to roll that right in on the financing deal. Hmm. That's a very good point. So what, like, what does the numbers look like? Say we had 200 foot of fence. How much additional revenue could they charge for that? Well, it just, it, you know, every market is different. You know, for instance, a, a wood, a basic cheap wood privacy fence in Nashville is 13 bucks a foot. In Ohio, guys are telling me it's 21 bucks a foot. Um, so every market's different, but, um, I would say it averages, I, I don't really try to shoot for the low numbers. I mean, I, you want to be profitable. So I would, I would say a, a national average would be somewhere between 50, uh, cents per square foot, which would be $6 a linear foot on up to seven, eight bucks a, a linear foot, which is a really common price for a six foot tall standard stockade dog ear, whatever you want to call it, or cap and trim type privacy fence. And your, your material cost on something like that's going to be around $2.50 a foot labor, uh, probably 60 cents a linear foot, something like that. Um, depending on how you set it up, subs or, or hourly guys, your labor is not going to kill you. And uh, so maybe an average of $4 a foot gross profit. Nice. Awesome. So what... Um, as far as what's the right time that they should consider adding fence staining into their business model? Cause obviously people watching this are going to be thinking about it. When, when do they start bringing that in? Well, if you haven't done it yet, you should probably do it today. You know, it's, it's, it's like anything else, you know, if you can do, if you're a fence company, you know, we brought on, when we were a fence company, we brought on gate operators and automation and uh, it was, it was very profitable. And, and we were already putting in the gates. Why, did, why didn't we put on operators to begin with or, or, or metal gate frames? You know, a metal gate frame is in Nashville. They're very popular now. 
we had wood fences were warping and twisting and we were already putting in the gate. Why didn't we just put on a metal gate frame for another 75 or hundred bucks? They were quicker to frame up uh, than building it out of wood. And our callbacks went to zero because we're no longer having warp gate frames. So you can think of staining in a similar way. Uh, it's different, but it's the same. You know, obviously it's going to make your fence more beautiful, give you more money, and you're, you're going to get the benefit of less callbacks and your customer will get the benefits of beauty. And, uh, you know, obviously if you go with like an oil-based product, it's going to preserve the wood. What would you say like out of 10 fencing jobs, how, how many do you think a good salesperson could upsell? Well, you know, that's, that's kind of a loaded question because you know, every, but uh, you know, all things the same, they should be able to sell 10 out of 10. If, if, you know, if all things, if everyone has the budget to do it every, and every job is, is doable. Um, you know, there's no reason people that, that obviously have the disposable income mm. will generally spend the money, but I don't know, you know, it, it, everybody's different, but you know, 40, 50, 60%, you know, I, I wouldn't think that would be unreasonable. I, I would like to see guys, you know, there's, there's some companies that if you want a fence for me, it's stained. It's, you know, it's got post saver sleeves, it's got fence armor, it's got metal gate frames. There's guys out there that are doing that and, and there's no questions asked about it. This is a really smart play, like you said, for those offering financing, because if, mm -hmm. if they're already buying a fence for say eight grand and they just bump it up another 2,500 for the staining, it's only going to raise the customer's monthly payment, you know, 20 bucks, 15, 20 well, it's, bucks. It's a value add. For instance, yeah. we, we've got the post saver sleeve that we distribute. It's $3 a post. It's a 20 year warranty. It's guaranteed for, for not rotting. You've already got the customer. You've already got the sale. Why not add $3 a post and give them a 20 year warranty? And, and it's not so much about making more money at that point. It's about giving your customer value. And if you're doing things like that, staining or, or different things, you're going to be the only guy in your market doing it at least for a while. And it's going to give you a competitive edge. How, how would these guys know, for instance, if this all sounds good, sounds like an easy upsell, great way to bring in a high profit margin uh, service here. And let's say they, you know, they don't want to put this on their crews, their employees, they would mm -hmm. rather subcontract it because that would be quick and easy. Right. Um, how could they distinguish between someone who's good at this and knows what they're doing versus, you know, someone that's just going to get them into trouble and, and ruin a fence? Right, right. Well, it's the, the same holds true when you're, when you're hiring any sub crew. You know, if you're going to do with subs, find somebody that's got a good reputation. Find somebody that's not so cheap. It's unbelievable. You know, you've got to pay somebody a good wage to do a good job. Um, and most of these guys, either you're going to train them in house and then you've got kind of full control and you know, the personality type you're looking for, you need somebody that's going to do a good job and represent your company well. And, and most of the skills can be trained if, if the mind is right. Um, but if you're dealing with a sub contractor that that's already doing this, say, Hey man, let me go look at a couple of your jobs. I mean, pretty simple. Um, if you're training them in house again, send them to school. Yeah. Yeah, that's and not bad. If, Just if you're go working, out and you know, look you at a couple other jobs, and you'll get pretty instant, simple. Yeah, yeah. and you can work. you could even you know if it's a if it's a sub and he's been a house painter for twenty years and he stains the occasional fence and deck, you could just say, hey, send me a couple references. You know, I just like to talk to somebody, and they might say, you know, he he was smoking cigarettes and cussing and and uh, got stain all over the house, or they might say he was fantastic, he was thorough, he was on time and detail oriented. That's the kind of people you're looking for. It doesn't matter. You know that. I mean, it's, it doesn't matter what they're doing. You need, you need those certain traits. Yeah. So geographically, where is fence staining the most popular? Well, it, good markets for this, you know, you know, I think any wood market is good. We, so because we sell stain, you know, when I first got into staining, I thought it was Texas. I thought Texas is the only place that this goes on. Tom Baker from uh, Baker's Gray Away Stain started this stuff back in the, from what I'm told, back in the 70s. He's the pioneer, the godfather of the staining industry. And our hat is off to him because he's still in business and still has a huge customer base. Mm. Uh, and um, so that's where it started. So the people in Texas would lead you to believe that that's it. But, but it's not true. Canada is a huge stain market. Uh, the Pacific Northwest is a huge stain market there's stain markets overseas, you know, pretty much anywhere they're selling wood products. It's a good stain market. Um, you know, it's, 
what you don't know what you don't know. And until you really, it's kind of like when you start driving a, you know, a green Ford F-250, you, re, you, you don't realize there's one, everybody drives a green F-250 until you're driving one because you start noticing it. So um, I think anybody who's doing wood fences, they're in a good market, you know, and everybody's going to tell me, well, in my market, it's super cheap and nobody will pay. Well, they say that in every market, you know, there's a, there's a rich plum, plumber and a broke plumber in every town. So so if, if you're putting in wood fence, I think your market will take it. You know, you've got room. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And I'm a huge believer in selling value. And yeah. especially they've already made an investment with you of five, six, seven thousand plus. And then you're giving them this to increase the lifespan for another, what, 10, 15 years or more. Right. It, so yeah, that makes sense. What, if they're gonna do this themselves in house, what kind of tools do they need? I understand they're gonna need stain, but what else? Well, you know, to- the, the stain business is really, it's got a low barrier to entry. If you've got a paintbrush, you're a stain contractor. You don't need much. Um, we wanna start talking about efficiencies though, then, and uh, things that, that work in multiple areas. I would look at an airless sprayer, a good quality airless sprayer. You can paint a fence with it. You can stain a fence with it. You can. Uh, you can use heavy coatings. You can use real thin coatings with them. You can, uh, you've got multiple tip sizes that you can change on the fly. Generally, uh, something like that is going to be your fastest way to get into the stain business. And the main thing about airless sprayers are this, is they're dependable and you can get parts anywhere for them. So that's where we point most guys. Uh, we, we start them out with a good airless sprayer. Very uh, cool. But going back to the your your previous question, whether to use a subcontractor or an in-house crew, um, there's a lot of good subcontractors out there. There's a lot of guys that stain in your market and, and they do a good job and they take pride in their work. And uh, I'll, I'll share a link later of a place that you can look, but there's a lot of guys out there. If you're, if you're concerned, if you want to do this, but you don't want to really, you don't want to burden your crews with it or take it on or run it under your, your name, you can, you can always, uh, you can always find a really good sub. I've got a list of subs in all 50 states and they're, they're out there and they do good, good work, you know? So if somebody needs a sub, I'll be glad to set them up with somebody. That's a super, if it were me, that's how I would do it. Is, is that's the best way to get into it. Like you said, I, I like your attitude of sell it first, worry about, <laughs> worry about fulfillment later, but yeah, you know, you can make well, it happen. Bottom line know, is someone wants you know, to make uh, it. Yeah. Prime example, Matt Warner, he was on your show not too long ago from My Salesman and Empire Fence. He, we talked, he sold a couple of stain jobs and he said, I got these jobs sold. Who should I do? And I, I had him go, uh, I sent him to a guy in Nebraska named Justin and he's uh, with all things fencing or all things. Uh, he's going to kill me because I botched his name, but it's all things uh, fencing or something like that. Justin up there. Sorry, Justin, if you're listening. And, uh, he knocked those jobs out, did a fantastic job for him. So, you know, the, awesome. the subs are there. Now I, I have talked to um, Rachel over at my mm-hmm. salesman and their, their tool. Cause a lot of these guys are using online estimators to yeah. do their bids. You can do fence staining through that. Yeah. So our, it, our it won't even brand. disrupt their business at all. No, no. If, if you get on my salesman and look and ask Rachel to add it into your catalog, our brand, is stain and so experts fence and deck stains it's already in the my salesman catalog they're already there and uh so it's simple as a quick email over to rachel and, and she can have stain popped in there immediately this is pretty smart guys especially if you want to sub it out customers already bought a fence from you it's a simple add-on that hey you know you can protect the life of it for a decade or more by applying this stain it's only going to cost you an extra 15, 20 bucks a month, you know, if they're financing. Well, you know, and, and like I said, we've got the, uh, there's subs everywhere, but we also do a thing called Staining University. It's a class that we, we put this on, we sponsor it. It's a free class. We, we do them every year, a couple times a year. Um, July 17th here in Nashville, we've got one going on. We're not sure with the current events if, if it's going to go through or not, but as of right now, we're full steam ahead with it. And uh, the last one we had 50 contractors. I think we'll have probably around 250 contractors at this next one getting free training. You buy your lunch, everything else is provided. And we got Ron Musgraves, who's a huge commercial, uh, uh, maintenance contract power wash guy. Who's going to talk about getting, uh, maintenance contracts, which is huge for staining business. 
Uh, he's going to be there. He's from Arizona. He's going to be here in Nashville flying in to talk. Uh, we got people from all over coming. It's going to be a really cool event, and it's free. We'll clean fences. We'll stain fences. We'll clean decks. We'll stain decks. So it's a free way to, to you know, obviously it costs something to get down here. So you cover the trip, and we're going to teach you guys how to stain a fence for free, and we'll have good food and a good time. But, uh, you know, there's, there's resources out there that weren't before. So, you know, no reason not to get in on it now. Very nice. Um, you're definitely the guy to talk to about this because you can help them out with subs. You can help them out with product. You actually sell the staining product. You got the university. Um, that's cool. Well, you know, I've been there. I can speak the fence language. You know, I grew up in it. So it's, uh, it's a fun world for me to be in. Well, um, <clears throat> you have something special that uh, for those who are attending, um, you're going to do something special for someone. What is that? Sure, let's give, surprise, some, right? let's give somebody some free stain. How about that? Very, very nice. So how do we, how do we kick that off? Who, who gets the free stain? How maybe do we the, do this? Maybe the first person that raises their hand that will use it. <laughs> okay. So yeah, who, who wants some stain? Is anyone going to raise their hand here? We've got Paul, Ashley, Mandy, Manitow, a couple people by phone. I guess they don't like free stuff. No one likes free stuff. It sounds like work, <laughs> isn't it? I'll give them a free sub to do a free job or something. Well, while we're waiting on that, um, I thought you did a really good job explaining everything. Um, but maybe we should see, we can have a quick Q and A if, and see if anyone has any questions about anything. Well, I can cover one thing that probably is going to come up where everybody's going to ask how much to charge. I don't really want to give a set price, but I, I think that you should be working on a minimum of a 50% profit margin. So a 50% gross profit. And, and for, uh, there's, it's more complex than this, but for a quick way to explain it for the guys that don't know, your cost of goods sold is material and labor. So what it costs you to produce that job, if you double it, that's a 50% gross profit margin. That's where you should be. And those numbers are going to be different from everybody down in where you are, Scott, it's going to be one number in Oregon. It's going to be a number, a different number in New Jersey. It's different in Nashville. It's different in Texas. It's different. Um, but we got guys all over that are, that strive, they make 50% or better. And that's really where you need to be to grow your business. Are, are, and are these kind of questions like you mentioned you have the um, staining university that they could go in there and join that? Absolutely. And it's yeah, free, that, right? And they could yeah, be that's, you, learning more and asking is, these questions there? Yeah, that's a Facebook group. We've, we've got a little okay. over a thousand stain contractors in that group. And uh, it's just a, it's, it's a place to show and tell, to ask questions, to uh, uh, get advice on jobs. You know, a lot of guys will be in there and they'll say, hey, I'm looking at this log cabin. What should I charge to do it? And, and people will walk them through it. It's a clean cut place. We don't allow any of the uh, uh, cussing and acting like a knucklehead like some of these groups do, but it's uh, definitely a good resource. I've learned a lot in that group. Very cool. Awesome. Well, so how can people, um, actually let, let me go ahead because we have some information. If they want to reach out to you um, and learn more, Let's share your contact information here. So this first one, restorativewoodproducts.com. This is for those that uh, want to buy some stain, correct? Yes, and the, and the name is a little misleading. So our, our main, our company, we started, uh, our, we've got a distribution company. Um, and so our stains are for sale on restorativewoodproducts.com. Um, for those that don't know, we, we are a, a distributor for post saver sleeves. Some of you have heard of those and among quite a few other product products that we have on there, but that's our, our main website is stain and seal experts.com restorative wood products.com is, is all about the products. And so you can go there and if you want to join the group, if you're just a tire kicker, if you're on the fence, go to staining university.com there's a free sign up right there and that's going to take you right into our Facebook group. And the Facebook group is just staining university. You can type that into Facebook and uh, get there just the same, but uh, I'll be happy to give my email, my, my cell phone number. We got guys that call me nonstop asking questions and we're glad to help. So, you know, 
we're always available, or at least we try to be. Awesome. So they can go into Facebook, they can search Staining University mm-hmm, and pull you it. up that way. And if they want to email you, you want to include that too? Yeah, just go to info at stainandsealexperts.com. And of course, I'm always on Facebook Messenger. People get me there. Let me let me put my personal cell phone on there. I, I'm kind of different. I do this. This is my personal number. Sure. Call me. If you're, if you're getting trouble and you need some help, call me. If I can't help you, I know who can. 615-533-4481. I've had that number uh, for... 17 years now. So you can catch me there anytime. And uh, I try to always answer it. Very nice. Well, this, this was extremely informative. I know I learned a lot uh, from you right now about fence staining and uh, seems highly profitable, win-win for customers, easy to upsell. They can go through their own uh, customer list and just start knocking this out. And even sub it out to people and you can even help them with finding subs. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I would, I would go into it uh, with the expectation that that you're going into it to make money. And so make sure that you do this and you make money doing it. We have guys here, all of our competitors here in Nashville that that compete against us in the staining business, they buy our stain and we've kind of made a deal with them that they're never going to have to worry about us underbidding them. Um, you know, that's just an integrity thing that we try to keep up. We want to, we don't, we're not going to undercut guys. But the thing is, we, we sold some stain to a guy last year and he was buying uh, another product and he was paying like 150 or 60 bucks a bucket. So his material cost was on up there around $3 and a quarter a foot or 30 cents, 35 cents a square foot, something like that roughly. And um, he said, how much should I be charging for this service? And, uh, I said, well, most guys that are owner operators probably start out at around 50 to 60 cents a square foot. And he said, oh, Um, and the numbers I said earlier were wrong because he told me 25 cents a square foot was what he was charging. And he was doing a lot of stain jobs. And he said, I'm doing a lot of stain jobs, but I'm not making any money. And I said, well, that's why you're too cheap. So go into this and and figure out your numbers up front. Know what it costs to do your business and and get that 50% margin. And uh, like I said, it's different for everybody, but go into it with the plan to make money and uh, start easy, start with the easy jobs, you know, and go for it. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. Awesome. Well, um, it doesn't look like we have any questions right now, but if some come up, then they know where to reach you. We posted your contact information and uh, thank you so much, Caleb. Uh, Man, Scott, I, I love these shows, so I'm glad you had me on, and I'd love to have you come on our podcast too. It's it's going to be a lot of fun this year, so look forward to working with you. Awesome, absolutely. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. Have an awesome weekend, Caleb. Thank you so much. You gave a wealth of information. Well, cool, Scott. I'll see you soon. Yep. See you. Thanks. Right, thanks. Bye, everybody. Have a good one. 